Hey, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, this glory and honor to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekah, Kodash, double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS, citation to the most high men in the four corners of the earth, pushed in his word of sincerity and the truth, and shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, that's your brother, Banyan Yun, GMS, Mississippi. Just real quickly going into how we are enslaved, and as you read here, in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, it goes into those particular blessings and cursings. And one of those particular cursings were thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. You know, you look at the so-called Negro in America in today's time, the so-called Hispanic, Latino, so-called North American Indian. These minorities, as they've been coined by the oppressor, have been given over into the hands of them that hate us. And it was through the will of the heavenly father. And I'm going to read it one more time. It says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. You know, what was the cargo slave ships all about? What were the auctioning blocks all about? What were the di dividing of the households all about? What were, was the selling off of your offspring, selling off of your sons, selling off of your daughters, the men going into captivity, the women being sex slaves and house slaves and held in bondage. You know, what was that all about? There's people in today's time with no heritage, no customs, no history to call their own. You know, the reason behind that is because the Heavenly Father sold us off unto these nations for turning our backs upon him. Now we're going to jump down to verse 48. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You know, when you look at old slavery images, you see the imagery of hunger, thirst, naked slaves, going unto whom? Going unto the oppressor in one of all things, for nurturing, for food, for water, for clothing, for work, for shelter. Everything under the sun from the so-called Negro, Hispanic, Latino, and Native American Indian was hand given by the oppressor, ultimately until he have destroyed us. Not entirety to where we were uprooted out of the earth, but in its entirety to where there came a falling away to we no longer remembered who we were. We no longer remembered the God that we served. We no longer remembered, remembered coming from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, we were completely destroyed as a people, but in these last days, the Heavenly Father is rising up his spirit throughout the entire planet Earth and placing select souls, select individuals, placing them in remembrance of him and his laws, statutes, and his commandments. Now let's get the book of Exodus, chapter 20, to understand as well uh, bondage. We we'll start at verse one. It says, And the Mosai spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Right? So being held in captivity or in slavery in the land of Egypt was synonymous to being what? Being held in bondage. And here we are in the new Egypt, because there was an exodus out of the first Egypt ancient Egypt, where the Heavenly Father led the children of Israel from captivity to liberty. And this second Egypt, we were taken away in cargo slave ships and served here to, to uh, work in the cane fields, to work in the cotton fields for hardcore bondage. The Heavenly Father is going to 
deliver us from this second Egypt, this new Egypt, by the way of the second Exodus. You know, there's going to come another salvation, another great salvation. But after this salvation, there won't be another captivity because the Heavenly Father is going to make us a righteous people. We're no longer going to sin against him to where he has to to punish us for our sins and our iniquities. You know, and that's the day that we look forward to. Now, let's jump back to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to jump down here to 68. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. You know, leaking up into Exodus, the 20th chapter and verse two, you know, and this is that land that, that these ships brought us unto. And it says that there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you. Meaning what? Redeem you or keep you from going into that particular captivity. Like nobody's going to be there to save you and no man shall save you. And a point, a good point here is the scripture says that we shall be sold unto our enemies. So who purchased us? You know, you had so-called Africans, you had so-called uh, Arabs, and you had so-called white people who had their hands deep inside of the, the cookie jar of injustice, deep inside uh, an avenue of unrighteousness, you know, to where they uh, took the heavenly father's people and uh, placed their hands upon them, you know, stretched forth their feet upon the back of our necks. And someone has to pay for that. And the heavenly father has it prepared that a particular group of people are going to pay for those injustices. And this is the book of Baruch chapter three and verse seven. It says, and for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee, you know, and then the father placed us in remembrance of that. And we understand, right, that our fathers have sinned and are not, but we have borne their iniquities. Why? Because the heavenly father visit the, the third and fourth generation of them that hate him or that sinned against him. Verse eight, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. And that's the point right there. You know, that's why we're in the predicament that we're in. And until the heavenly father sends his only begotten son to come back and redeem us because he's already shed his blood for us. But he's waiting on the actual physical time to uh, recollect us once again. You know, and you can read that in the book of Acts, the first chapter, you know, when they asked him, has thou come again to restore the kingdom unto the nation of Israel? So we'll end it here in the book of Jeremiah. And it's going to be Jeremiah 8 and 20. It says the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. But Lord will, we shall be saved very soon. You read in the book of Luke chapter 1, around verse 72, verse 73. It says until we are saved from our enemies and all of them that hate us. So until next time, I say shalom, which means peace.